As quite possibly the most well-known gaming franchise of all time, at least outside of Mario anyway, GTA has allowed Rockstar to become household names, their games being a steady reflection of both an internal work ethic and attitude, and an outlet for creative experimentation. Flashback to GTA 3, and for the most part, we very much got a 3D GTA. Something that took the sense of humour, vehicle variety, and mission design of the first games, and polygonized it. That's not taking a single thing away from such an immaculate title, but start analysing what came after in retrospect, and you'll pick up on Rockstar employing a everything, including the kitchen sink, approach. Though it was 15 years ago now, when San Andreas first introduced RPG stat grinding, a food mechanic to maintain health, and a frickin' jetpack, it started splitting the fanbase in a bunch of different ways. Following GTA 4, we had a notable demographic that wanted a more serious tone, whereas others were just content to roll with whatever Rockstar would conjure up next. The result became GTA 5, but no matter where you are on the best of all the GTAs, the series' back catalogue is filled with some mission designs that we just kinda slogged through, probably because broadband connections and social media weren't really a thing yet. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 worst GTA missions that almost made you stop playing. Number 10, Supply Lines, San Andreas. An oldie but a goodie, Supply Lines is easily San Andreas's version of Vice City's Demolition Man. Where the ladder had you bringing down a building with a toy helicopter, more on that later on, here you're given one terribly controlling toy biplane as the mission itself is to gun down gangsters, evade fire, and blow up a number of vans. All of this as your fuel allowance is constantly draining. The response to this was so incendiary, Rockstar actually altered the speed at which the fuel drains when San Andreas came across to Xbox. In retrospect, this is perhaps the apex of Rockstar's experimental phase, the period in GTA's life where they were clearly having a bit of a laugh amongst the coders and boardroom meetings, trying to come up with the most off-kilter ideas for missions yet. I mean, mission accomplished, but this was absolutely god-awful. Number 9, Pulling Favors, GTA 5. Speaking of God Awful, GTA 5 seemed to try and find the central Venn diagram loop between San Andreas' love for minigames and GTA 4's maturity, all by trying to include missions dedicated to some of the most mundane things in gaming history. We had dock work, running five miles in the desert to trigger a phone call, and this. Literally just towing cars for half an hour, nothing more, nothing less. The mission is introduced as one of the first Strangers and Freaks cutaways that you can find, but being that NPC Tonya intones that the job is just supposed to be done by her crack-smoking boyfriend, the reality is that you're just doing someone else's job for them. Drive up, hook up the car, drive back, drop it off. Repeat until you fall asleep. <laughs> Number 8, Kingdom Come, GTA 3. GTA 3 has perhaps the best set of missions across the whole franchise if you lined them all up but that playlist wouldn't be without some quirks. Kingdom Come in some ways exemplified the way players could think their way out of any awkward combat scenario. Parking a car on the road before a target activated to hem them in was a regular favorite, but in this case, you had to think of something other than standing your ground because any one of these suicidal maniacs would down you in one blast. Based on a host of spanked up madmen repeatedly laughing using the same soundbite over and over, the trick was to leave the area and take a ramp up above the parking lot where you'd been ambushed in the first place. Only then could you throw down grenades or molotovs enough to take them all out, offing these psychos and keeping your sanity intact. Number 7, Amphibious Assault, San Andreas. GTA and swimming haven't always gone very well together. Whether the instant death-bringing water of GTA 3 or Vice City, the pointless waterways of GTA 4, or the sluggish submarines of GTA 5, it kinda makes you wonder why Rockstar keep trying to make water work. Amphibious Assault only contributed to this disdain, tasking you with swimming without being detected up to a number of boats to off some targets. The problem was, you had to spend hours underwater away from the mission to rank up your lung capacity enough to get it to work. Millions of players just discovered the reality of purchasing a sniper rifle and shooting all the targets from afar instead. A potential moment of loving just how much freedom you have in the game, twinned with the reality that it was actually just terribly designed. Number 6, Demolition Man, Vice City. You cannot mention supply lines without Demolition Man. And though it's a toss-up as to which is really worse, they're both so thoroughly misguided and both so off-putting. Like supply lines would later have with its gangsters blowing you out the sky, here you've got to plant some bombs in a construction site as the workers try to take you down. 
A more prevalent enemy is the camera that routinely gets stuck in the tiny confines of the level itself. Alongside a countdown timer, because that's always fun having a timed component, and the squirrely physics of the helicopter itself. No part of this felt good, worthwhile, or considered, and again, I have to imagine that it was included as a joke. Number 5. Free Fall. San Andreas. Okay, I'm gonna take back what I said about supply lines being the peak of experimentation. CJ free falling from one plane to another, the size of which while it happens making him look like a giant, and entering casually through the side door way up in the clouds, is peak experimental GTA. Of course, many didn't even see this cutscene because first you had to catch up to the plane that you were stealing, and the tiny pootling biplane given for the mission can't even do the speed required. Yep, it literally just isn't designed to catch up to your target. The only solution was trial and error, until you could predetermine the exact route the plane would take and attempt to cut it off instead. This process could take hours, and considering a lack of checkpoints and the array of things that could go wrong, that was just some straight up time wasting agony. Number 4. The Driver Vice City. What's that? More agony? Such a feeling didn't used to be associated with GTA, but Vice City pitted you against an AI car that was literally bolted to the road. That was some straight up physics breaking mayhem and not in a good way. Said AI car was driven by the sniveling Hillary, a character who made up for in driving skill what they lacked in personality. The mission itself is simply to beat him in a one-on-one -on -one race, though his programming meant that he couldn't deviate from a set path, scuppering your chances at every turn. Try to get ahead and even the slightest swerve would send you careening into a nearby building. Try to leave something in his path to get a head start and it would just get knocked aside. Do anything other than drive a perfect race, having memorized every last one of his blind spots and you were toast. Number 3. The Snowstorm GTA 4 For as much as GTA 4 advanced the core engine of the franchise thanks to Rockstar's new tech, giving us a combat model replete with cover options and melee encounters, they pushed it a little bit too far in Snowstorm. Set to be both a stealthy infiltration and also a all hell breaks loose and now you need to survive 1-2 combo, once the poop hit the fan, there were just too many enemies and vehicles to deal with. GTA simply isn't built with the right level of animation priority to manage threats coming from multiple angles at once, and being that the maze-like structure that you were in was confusing already, it was far too easy to get overwhelmed by unseen forces ambush killing you in seconds. Should you survive, there was then a 5-star wanted level to shake off. Yet mess any portion up and you were back to the very beginning. Number 2. Wrong Side of the Tracks San Andreas It should have been so easy, so cool, so GTA. But say it with me, all we had to do was follow the damn train. As millions now know though, following said train involved trying to grapple with some of the most unwieldy vehicle physics in gaming history. We not only had a frenetic, high-pitched, fart-sounding motorbike to direct, but a train whose speed never lined up with our own. A number of obstacles from traffic to world geometry getting in the way, and a camera that was determined to never focus on what mattered. Needless to say, San Andreas has had the most entries on this list for good reason. It's a monumental achievement in open world gaming and pure game design in general, but man if there weren't some casualties along the way. And number 1. Death Row Vice City if there's one thing outside of water missions that GTA has struggled with over the years, actually getting to a point where they're now reliable and genuinely fun, it's just third-person shooting missions. Never knowing when to lean into manual aiming, lock-on, assisted, or a mix of all three, the myriad options in GTA 5 then felt like Rockstar just saying, go on, you figure it out, we don't really know anymore. Death Row then, back in Vice City, asked you to take on a staggering array of foes all by yourself. Scattered across a junkyard from top to bottom, left to right, the whole mission was on one checkpoint, and you were literally at the mercy of the game's broken lock-on. Someone firing at you from literally two feet away on the ground? Nah, the game just thinks you need to shoot at that other person on top of a bin all the way in the distance. This whole mission just felt straight up bad, and it's one of the only notable down points in the otherwise stellar Vice City. At least, that's what I think. How have you found GTA's mission design over time? Rockstar have expanded their approach to set pieces to include more triggerable elements and on-rail sections, and it's resulted in a real mixed bag depending on what we're focusing on. I totally have a soft spot for how ambitious they've been over the years, but there's no denying that the best playing missions are in their newest games. Regardless of all that, I've been Scott from WhatCulture.com. Please check out the WhatCulture Gaming Podcast, and I'll catch you soon.